Well then, so I get asked a lot to, to clarify the why on uh, progesterone timing. Um, I think I mentioned in one of my videos on progesterone that I prefer uh, in feminizing therapy to not start progesterone until at least one year after uh, someone has started uh, estrogen therapy and probably it would be better to do like two or three years uh, into estrogen therapy and I think that I briefly mentioned that it's because I want like a certain amount of development to occur before uh, starting progesterone uh, because of the way that it helps mature the like lobular ductile tissue and whatnot in the breast tissue uh, and it kind of needs to you know develop a little bit before progesterone is going to be able to do anything and while that part is true you know that progesterone seems to be more about maturing the tissue you already have as opposed to growing like the the size of the breast because you know the fatty tissue um, deposition that occurs that causes the size uh, to increase uh, is, is not what's being caused by progesterone. Progesterone is more maturing the tissue that's present uh, such as like ductile tissue and whatnot. Um, anyway, that's part of it, but another part of it to keep in mind uh, has to do with cisgender puberty uh, in regard to uh, cisgender female puberty. And while I, I won't say that like basing transgender transitioning off of cisgender puberty is like the end all be all and definitely how everything should be because we just don't really have enough research to say one way or the other is modeling everything after cisgender puberty the way to go it's all we have right now it seems to be the best model that we have is how cisgender people develop and go through puberty and so that's what we base a lot of things off of and so because of that uh two terms that would be good to familiarize yourself with uh are philarchy and menarchy now if you're from different regions different parts of the world you may also pronounce it as phalark or menarch it's fine, I just find Thelarchy Menarchy to be much more fun in the pronunciation, so that's what I'm going with. Uh, anyway, so what are these two terms? People may be somewhat familiar with the term Menarchy, but perhaps not Thelarchy. So what Thelarchy is, is the very beginnings of breast development in cisgender females, and this can occur anywhere from eight, nine years old, uh, right? But it's not that you have people who are that young developing like breast tissue. That's a different condition altogether. It's that the very beginnings start then. And this is well before they start having any kind of a menstrual cycle, which is what happens with menarche. So with thalarche, what you start to see initially is the development of breast buds and in general terms, I'll say these are like uh, the seeds from which the, the breast tissue will develop henceforth. Uh, they are palpable, you can actually feel them, and in transgender women you can feel them as well, although it is not necessary that you feel them, and they come and go relatively quickly, so it's not something that if you didn't notice it that something is wrong or anything like that, but commonly you'll see someone say, oh my goodness, I feel a knot on my chest, do I have cancer? I just started estrogen therapy. No, you know, it's usually going to be like a dime or nickel sized uh, and rather firm. Uh, and that is a breast bud that has developed uh, and it will eventually go away. Um, usually it's there for uh, a couple of weeks, you know. Um, everybody's different, of course, but in general, you know, they, they form they go away, but it's a good sign. It means that you're entering uh, appropriately the development of breast tissue. Um, and so this is what thalarchy marks, is the beginning of the development of breast tissue. And so this can occur anywhere from like two to three years before you see menarche develop, which is when you have that first menstrual cycle uh, in a cisgender female person. And so what does all this mean, right? So you do have uh, estradiol and estrone playing a large part in the uh, thelarchy where you develop 
uh, breast buds and you start to see over time a little bit of fatty deposition to the chest tissue uh, much more so later on but as years pass you start seeing some fatty tissue deposited uh, where the breasts are developing uh, after that uh, initial breast budding develops and then goes away and so on and so forth into the future now that's with estradiol and uh, estrone both are just two of the main types of estrogen uh, and you're not really seeing a lot of involvement uh, or elevation of progesterone at this point uh, when you hit menarche however uh, you do then start seeing elevation of estradiol as well as elevation of progesterone in a certain rhythm every month <laughs> going up and then dropping down uh, and so it follows then uh, the logic that we're using with starting progesterone later on is because since thelarchy uh, begins before significant elevations of progesterone uh, really start and the cycling of progesterone with the menstrual cycle uh, that uh, then we take that to mean that estrogen should be started first and then later on after a certain amount of development has occurred uh, progesterone should be added to help mature the tissue that's then there now clearly progesterone also has other uses uh, in cisgender women or just folks with a uterus in general uh, in regulating the menstrual cycle um, but anyway uh, that is essentially the thought process behind why um, I personally feel anyway doesn't mean everybody has to you know 100% agree uh, but this is why I personally feel that progesterone is better added uh, later on um, because it, it does not seem to play a significant role in the beginnings of breast development in cisgender females uh, because it doesn't really start rising and falling and doing all its thing until two to three years after thalarchy, the beginnings of breast development start in cisgender women. Um, so I hope that sort of clears up um, why I do things the way I do. I, you know, everyone of course is free to agree or disagree. Um, you know, keep in mind, we all have progesterone in our body anyway, so it's not like uh, whenever you start estrogen therapy that you have zero progesterone or whatever. You have progesterone in your body, everybody does, you know, so you have a little bit there. And whatever little bit that we have is clearly enough for whatever the beginnings of breast development uh, require, but it seems that most of the beginnings of breast development rely heavily on estrogens such as estradiol and estrone rather than progesterone and then later on progesterone becomes more of a component. So anyways, those are my thoughts. Hope you all had fun and learned something. Okay.